I hate ads and you do too. Get an ad blocker to avoid that shit. You can donate to my Ko-Fi or get a membership to support my content so I don't have to worry about copyright. Thank you and enjoy the video. Greetings, this is Lernix TV. Yes, you heard that right. The Lernix TV you have seen up until now has been a deep fake. Today, we will be scouring the internet for general opinions regarding Linux. Hold up, cut the shit. Why are GNU slash Linux users so gay? 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 Technology. A group of computer users held a demonstration today in front of Microsoft's West Coast office in Foster City. They want Microsoft to give them a refund. The demonstrators say that they bought computers with Windows 95 already installed, but they never used Microsoft's operating system because they prefer something called Linux instead. Mr. Say most who ask get the runaround, which goes like this. Oh, okay. Calling your re uh, resellers the way to go. Okay. They sent me to you folks. <laughs> well, it might be uh, something you have to go back to him and say, well... And the manufacturers are saying it's a, you have to deal with Microsoft on this, so it's a catch-22. The protesters are users of an operating system called Linux. Thirty years ago, this might have been a demonstration against the war outside an Army recruiting station. But in 1999, in Silicon Valley, the protesters have gone high-tech. Well, the calendar may say that it is President's Day, but it felt more like Independence Day for computer users. Today, many stage protests around the country and here in the Bay Area over having to pay for something they don't want and don't use. Microsoft's operating system. This story outlines a revolt against complacency a long-standing byproduct of the commodification and modernization of society, a gradual dissipation of individualism, moral accountability, and genuine originality. A collective bout of frustration against complacency arose with the Windows refund day. Relations are tense regarding Windows and Linux, as many Linux users feel as though Windows forces the general population into submission by pre-installing Windows on OEM systems. Other Linux users take a more philosophical approach, denoting a resentment towards the prevalence of proprietary software and Windows for what they represent ideologically. Linux's sprawling web of developers all seek to fulfill different goals in varying ways, whereas Windows is ubiquitous but constraining. To some, Windows Refund Day was a glorified publicity stunt for Linux, erroneously under the guise of sincere and well-intentioned public upheaval. For others, it served as a short-lived, indelible call for awareness and change. Despite these dissenting optics, Windows Refund Day made a ripple in the public consciousness nonetheless. A large reason as to why Windows is the most widely used operating system in the world is due to virtually every single OEM bundling Windows with their systems. On the first few releases of Windows, end users simply installed Windows onto their systems manually through floppy disks, and most of the time, Windows had to be purchased separately. During this time, specific negotiations were made with OEMs concerning the pre-installation of Windows onto their systems, but nothing quite ubiquitous came to be just yet. Dubious business practices during this time included Microsoft unfairly charging OEMs for licensing fees whether their systems came with Windows or not, and changing the terms of license agreements retroactively upon discovering that OEMs distributed operating systems other than Windows. Gradually after the release of Windows 3.0, Microsoft made arrangements with a slew of OEMs to have them pre-install Windows onto their systems in spite of obvious antitrust concerns. Microsoft was powerful at this time, but not considered a monopoly just yet. 
However, the act of pre-installing Windows onto computers with little to no information disclosing such was thought to be manipulative and not competitive. Microsoft considered this to be beneficial to the end user, claiming consumers benefit from the pre-installation of Windows on PCs. It provides the best user experience from the time a consumer first turns on the PC and saves consumers the substantial effort and resources associated with having to install an operating system that functions properly. Despite complaints from a small, vocal minority of dissatisfied users, nothing came of it just yet. Denoted in an EULA for Windows around the release of Windows 9X, a term clearly states that you can request and subsequently receive a full refund if you don't agree with the license agreement. By installing, copying, downloading, accessing, or otherwise using the software product, you agree to be bound by the terms of this EULA. If you do not agree to the terms of this EULA, Manufacturer and Microsoft Licensing Inc. are unwilling to license the software product to you. In such event, you may not use or copy the software product and you should promptly contact manufacturer for instructions on return of the unused products for a refund. Another term defined in the EULA for the Microsoft Developer Network subscription outlines a similar rule. You agree to be bound by the terms of this EULA by installing, copying, or otherwise using the product. If you do not agree, do not install or use the product, you may return it to your place of purchase for a full refund. So in essence, if you did not install or use the product and you disagreed with the EULA, you could receive a full refund. Soon, the greater Linux community took note of this and promptly took advantage. Computer World, a tech-oriented newspaper intended for those in the IT sector, released its fourth copy of Volume 33 on January 25th, a month before Windows Refund Day took place. A spot on page 13, titled Windows Refunds, talks about the mounting prevalence of websites intended to help Linux users refund their copies of Windows. Several websites, including a popular site for the Linux operating system, are hosting what they call the Windows Refund Center. Users can learn details about how to apply to Microsoft Corp for a refund on the Windows operating system that comes with most new PCs. Would-be refund recipients must switch to Linux, Novell Inc's newware, or some other system, and do it before ever having run Windows on the PC in question. I attempted to gather information from the aforementioned website, but it seems to be defunct, and the Wayback Machine has no records of it. A web page and personal account of the events that took place on Windows Refund Day created by Mark Merlin provides several useful pieces of information. For those who hadn't heard the story, February 15, 1999 was Windows Refund Day. It was a worldwide day when open source OS users went to Microsoft's office to return their unused licenses of Windows that they were forced to acquire since they were bundled with the machine they bought. The Windows EULA clearly states that the agreement can be refused by the end user and that Windows can be returned to the manufacturer. In real life, however, the manufacturers typically say that they can't refund the Windows license and tell the user to contact Microsoft directly. I can't say I really blame manufacturers for doing that because I don't have proof for this, but I'm convinced that manufacturers would lose money that they would reimburse because Microsoft would not pay them back they wouldn't be allowed to reuse the license on another machine, and Microsoft would impose a different OEM pricing on them if they decided to ship non-Microsoft OS's, or if they shipped machines without an OS. If they were to refund Windows, this would reveal their OEM pricing agreement with Microsoft, and I'm not quite sure manufacturers as well as Microsoft wants people to have that information. Anyway, a few people from SVLUG, including Don Marty, Rick Moen, Chris DeBona, the world-famous Nick Mofit, and Tabinda Khan organized the Bay Area Windows refund effort. Since at the Linux Tea Party, Microsoft showed up at our meeting point to try to deter us from going to their offices in Palo Alto, this time, the ultimate meeting point was kept secret, and four officers revealed it at the last minute to the crowd that had gathered, as planned, at the four meeting points around the Bay Area. Merlin goes into detail about their meeting spot of choice, a Denny's a mile away from the Microsoft office with images to boot. Where do we go when we don't know where to meet? Denny's. 
So, the final gathering point was in front of a Denny's in Foster City, about a mile away from the Microsoft office. Some of the press was there and filmed and interviewed us while we were preparing our signs. Some even came up with nice NQPC, not quite politically correct, signs. Nathan Myers on the left can take all the credit for this one. If you don't understand, it's because you don't watch South Park. You've heard about computer wearables, but there's no reason why you can't have penguin wearables. I need to thank Mark Bolzern from Linux Mall for the penguins I had, since those were a gift from him. You can buy your own here. Also, VA Research was generous again and made special t-shirts for the event. Once again, thank you very much VA. At the event, Microsoft haphazardly attempted to welcome the throng of protesters with an evidently unconvincing sign. Microsoft welcomes the Linux community. They had signs saying Linux press conference or Linux event which led us to the top of that parking lot and there were a few Microsoft representatives along with the reporters. They tried to pull that welcome thing just like at the Linux tea party but this time we weren't ready to play along. We weren't there to make fun of them, we were there for business. Sorry, but this time a nice sign and a few drinks won't be enough. For reference, also, even though a majority of the crowd were Linux users, it was in no way a Linux-only event. Other alternative OS users joined us, including FreeBSD users, and I'm told a couple of SCO users. However, I don't really blame people for mistaking this with a Linux-only event, as it was mostly announced as such. Basically, the Microsoft folks told us in the press that the EULA explicitly says that we should talk to the PC manufacturer. They also issued a written official statement. The statement in question attempts to damage control, placing blame entirely on the OEMs claiming that any specific license is on account of the OEM that sold it. Dear valued customer, Microsoft welcomes you to its local sales office today. We are always available to answer any questions that you might have about Microsoft products and technologies. We understand that part of your purpose today is to request a refund for the version of the Windows operating system that came pre-installed on your personal computer. The license agreement that accompanies the version of Windows pre-installed on new PCs clearly states that if users for some reason choose not to agree to that license, they should contact their PC maker to address this issue. When a consumer purchases a new PC, the license for Windows resides with that specific PC maker, and each PC maker has its own process for working with customers on licensing issues. PCs sold with Windows pre-installed are optimized for the Windows operating system by the PC maker to guarantee the best customer experience. At the request of the PC makers that license Windows for resale, Microsoft must direct you to the PC maker from which you purchased your copy of Windows. The statement also references the fact that there are an abundance of OEMs that offer computers without Windows or give you options other than Windows. Fundamentally, you, the consumer, have a choice of operating systems and PCs. You can purchase a PC with a non-Microsoft operating system or a PC with no operating system pre-installed at all. In fact, more than 200,000 PC makers worldwide will allow you to choose which exact components you want on your PC, from processor to video card to operating system software. According to the Linux.org website, more than 60 OMs in 14 countries offer PCs with Linux pre-installed. The choice is yours, and we hope that you, like millions of other customers around the world have done, choose Microsoft Operating System products to run your PC and enhance your computing experience. As always, we invite your comments and feedback on how we can continue to serve our customers. Feel free to visit the Microsoft website at Thank you, Microsoft. Needless to say, this addressal fell flat, the main issue with it being the fact that end users who sought to refund their Windows license were led to the OEM by Microsoft and led to Microsoft by the OEM, effectively putting them in a catch-22, resulting in no refund whatsoever. This seems to have stemmed from a miscommunication and lack of professionalism on account of both Microsoft and the OEMs, with no legitimate system in place to restitute users despite a clear denotation in their EULA. This addressal also deceivingly fails to mention the fact that most if not all name brand OEMs sold computers pre-installed with Windows exclusively. This can be chalked up to equivocation as Microsoft knows this. Merlin gives his breakdown of the letter. Someone needs to tell them that I'm not their freaking valued customer. 
I do have to admit that they're good when they say that we have a choice of OS. Unless you go through extraordinary efforts or build your PC yourself, it's still difficult to get a PC without Windows nowadays. Almost impossible for name brands. And they very well know it. At the request of the PC makers that license Windows for resale, Microsoft must direct you to the PC maker from which you purchased your copy of Windows. Oh yeah, this is a really good one. If this isn't definite proof that they are lying through their teeth, I don't know what else you need. I suppose I am to believe that PC manufacturers were the ones to ask for that clause, saying that they'd reimburse Windows if the customer didn't want it? More than 200,000 PC makers worldwide are supposed to let me choose which OS I want, if any? Geez, where have I been shopping then? In the bit about quoting Linux.org, the specific page they refer to is most likely this one. While it is a nice move from them, let's be serious. If it were that easy to buy a PC without Windows, we wouldn't have to make a list. We hope that you, like millions of other customers around the world have done, choose Microsoft operating system products to run your PC and enhance your computing experience. Maybe it's just because I'm French, but I have a different understanding of the word enhance than they seem to have. After being stalled by Microsoft with no refunds in sight, a select handful of protesters decide to swarm Microsoft's office itself on the ninth floor of the complex. However, the elevator was reprogrammed as to not stop at the ninth floor before the protesters arrived. In an attempt to circumvent this, they instead opted to use the stairs descending from the tenth floor in order to get to the office. However, doors were locked and nothing of note happened afterwards. You can press the ninth floor button, but it won't go anywhere. The protesters stood and waited for a while, and eventually left with no refunds issued to anyone. The protesters fled to an internet cafe called the Coffee Net. In the end, Windows Refund Day was equally as polarizing as it was puzzling. Microsoft did not issue any refunds on account of the protest itself, and the whole day in that regard was not successful. On the other hand, the event predictably stirred up a fair amount of publicity for Linux and also brought into question Microsoft's suffocating policies concerning user experience and monopolization. A lesson can be extrapolated from the whole ordeal. That is to say that success comes in many forms. I personally believe that the Linux community was successful in the end, as they gained publicity and Microsoft gained infamy, further cementing their reputation as a tyrannical company in the tech world. Even if Microsoft carries more power, the Linux community as a whole is full of impassioned and unique individuals that carry a level of loyalty that is to be admired and studied. As to whether or not a similar revolt will happen in the future, I'm not going to hold my breath, but you never know.